Yeah, hi, small business owners. It's Harpreet Singh from Sharon Law Firm. So while continuing due for the ABC test and also discussing about how you can get an exemption from an ABC test and under AB5 law. So our third exemption through which you can get uh, out of this strict test, which is called an ABC test, uh, it's the business to business contracting relationship. So as its name sounds, so if one business is dealing with another business, obviously uh, that first business or second business is not the employee or employer of each other. So I think that makes more common sense. And this exemption, uh, it's, it's kind of an exemption which is catch for all, where I think a person who doesn't come under the list, which we have looked for professional service contract exemption, you need to be in those certain professions and you need, to, uh, you need to meet the requirements. So if you don't come under those profession or your, uh, I think work doesn't come under that, then I think you can always look at this exemption to see if you can come out of AB5 law and your, uh, the issue can be resolved through a Baroli test, which is an old test. So, so let's see what are the factors for business to business contracting relationship. As in general, again, this theme follows if you are a genuine business, if you're acting like that, uh, and then you obviously you would get the exemption. So the first factor is again, similar to the professional uh, contracting relationship you have, it's that you're free from control and direction of uh, the person who have employed you. Uh, because again, I think even in the ABC test, the control is one of the main factor, even Baroli test, the control is one of the factors. So it's similar to that in this uh, exemption also contract uh, control and direction is one of the again important factor you have to look and it's also coined kind of I think based on the facts uh, the factual inquiry needs to be made because control and direction it's a very vague and broad word uh, so it would be I think only determined based on what are the facts in your situation but still, I think you would be able to understand a control in a business to business relationship. If suppose there is no genuine business going on. So control, for example, it would be that the person who have hired you is asking you to be at certain location, wear particular clothing uh, and use particular tools and use particular method to perform your work. So if there is more and more, more control you see, uh, compared to uh, a particular work which performed in uh, in normal daily life, then you can think about there is a greater chance that uh, the uh, the person who was hired was not able to meet this uh, factor and in turn would not able to uh, get an exemption from AB5 law or ABC test. So the second factor is provide services directly to the contracting business rather than customer of contracting business. So uh, let's give you the example that uh, a homeowner hires a plumber and that plumber comes to homeowner and homeowner is asking, okay, can you perform services to the house which is just nearby us? And I have already talked with that person. Uh, so you just have to perform, I will pay you for that. Uh, so, uh, so just perform the services in that manner. So you would be thinking about, did that first homeowner actually hire the plumber as his own employee? Because it seems that he didn't ask the plumber to perform work for him. Instead of that, he is asking the plumber to perform work for his neighbor. And he's saying that the money is already paid. I will give you the money. So it seems in, I think that kind of a business that the person is actually performing services for some other homeowner 
on the request of some other homeowner which is acting kind of an employer in that kind of a situation or even if we uh, I think look the other relationship if suppose you ask to uh, ask somebody else to draft document and that person asks somebody else <laughs> so I think this relationship it seems to not be a genuine business because if a person asks you to perform services for its customer usually that work is usually performed by an employee so you have to look at that particular relationship and the facts associated with that because if a genuine business always performs service directly to a particular uh, entity who have hired them or a particular person who have hired them so if a person who is hiring asking to perform services for their own customers or for their own clients then that doesn't sounds to be a genuine business under this exemption so let's see the next factor the next factor as it's similar to the other exemption that your independent contractor agreement needs to be in writing so if you have something uh, verbal that would not work and you will not get the exemption let's see the next factor obviously you would need to have appropriate business license or if the local community needs a separate kind of permit then you need those kind of permits to operate as a genuine business the next factor is maintain a business location that's separate from the contractors uh, business work location and it's similar to again the same exemption and with the ongoing theme that you need to also act as an independent business separate from the contracting business so you need to have your own location either it's you're working from home or either it's some other business location so you need to have an established location so the next factor is customarily being engaged in an independently established business so it's again those same continuing theme and the next factor is actually contracting with other businesses to provide same or similar services and maintain clientage without restriction from the hiring entity. So if you would be an independent business, then obviously you would have your own clientage and you would not be restricted by some other person. For example, if you have a mortgage business, you are a mortgage broker, so you would have your own clientage if you're acting as a independent business. So no other business like a realtor will not tell you that you should not work outside of me. You should only work on my clients and you should only work in this particular form. Because if that's the case, then uh, that the mortgage broker is working as an employee for this real estate broker or real estate agent. So again, the facts are very important in this situation. So you have to look the facts and again, those ongoing theme you have to follow that if it sounds and seems that it's an independent business, then probably it is an independent business. So these are just the factors which just provide you the logic to follow that. Uh, and I think to, to provide you those uh, things to look at. So the next factor, which is again advertise and hold yourself as an independent business. That's again uh, one of the thing you always look in a genuine business. And the next one is that you will use your uh, own tools and the hiring entity is not providing you the tools and equipment for performing these services. So again, that continuing theme that you're acting as uh, an independent business. Next, that you negotiate your own rates and you set your own hours and and work based on uh, the skill which you have and the method which you have the discretion to use so again it's the same continuing theme but it it pro it was provided in a general way so that it's it can be used by other industries which were not in the list which we have previously looked in the previous videos so this is kind of an 
catch-all exemption factors, if you can meet these, then you don't have to follow the ABC test in order to resolve your dispute about an employee or independent contractor. So let's see, I think the next one, again, uh, this exemption, it's about contractor and subcontractor relationship. Uh, the people who are working in construction industry, they, they know that there is a general contractor and then subcontractor, either it's electrician or your plumber or the person who is uh, installing tiles or person who is installing these doors and windows. So there are these different subcontractor and then you have this main general contractor who is who has got this contract to build this house or this building. Uh, so you understand that structure. So in that same structure, these factors also come into situation uh, when you are thinking about to get an exemption. So it's against the same, you need to have your subcontract in writing and you need to obviously have a license uh, to to appear as an independent subcontractor uh, so also again you need to have your own business location license permits and you also need to have your own hours obviously there is a deadline and you have to follow deadline but your number of hours, your method of working, that's at your discretion if you are actually an independent subcontractor. The another factor which is somewhat different than the other industry is that you will take uh, financial responsibility for your own error and omissions. Because uh, if you know the general rule for employees, and we will cover the general employment rules in future, so. Uh, so one of the main thing you have to look at is the financial responsibility, which is that if you screw up, then you would own that and an independent business owns that. But if you are an employee, then obviously the employee cannot be sued unless and until if they are uh, reckless and, and intentional in their act. But usually the employer got sued because employer is the person and this person is uh, employee is just the agent of the employer. So the employer is on the hook. But if you are an independent business, then you are on the hook. And that seems so. So that uh, comes in the way of a contractor, subcontractor relationship to show that it's an independent business. And again, it follows the same factor, so I will not repeat it. So it's similar to business to business contracting relationship. So there is a last way of getting an exemption, uh, which is a bigger way. There are like uh, two, three sub provisions for different um, professions, and I will not get into it because it goes more in detail and probably you would, <laughs> you would be thinking about it's too much. I don't understand it. So my main purpose is to just provide you that general uh, knowledge about this law and how it's structured and what exemptions you can get out of it and provide the factors for those exemptions. So the next one is referral agencies. Referral agencies, as you know, it can be your uh, staffing companies and probably I think you have dealt with maybe in past with employment staffing companies or referral agencies also means uh, your directories, like your yellow pages, your Angie's list, uh, your uh, list uh, with like any kind of profession. Now doctors have like different kind of websites, lawyers have those websites. Like I think every industry have some kind of directory online website where uh, uh, you can, I think, uh, showcase yourself there is some time a fee, some directories are free. So, so those directories, if suppose they are sued that uh, this person have performed negligent work and this was showcased in your uh, directory and now this person is an employee of yours. So in that situation, so what a referral agency need to show to get an exemption from AB5 test and ask the court to follow Baroli test. So what factor they have to meet? 
The first one is the service provider is free from control and direction. Again, those same uh, words you have listened, I think, uh, from several videos now, uh, because it's the same continuing theme, even with referral agencies, that you need to be free from control and direction from a referral agency. Um, so these factors, uh, the business which is listed on this directory, so they have to meet these factors that they are free uh, from control and direction from this referral agency. Next factor is that if the work for the client is performed in a jurisdiction that requires service provider to have business license, business registration or any kind of permit, then obviously they need to have that. That's also sounds similar. Again, if if they are a contractor, a general contractor or a subcontractor, they are working or doing construction, remodeling work for a house, building, they need to have those particular licenses. The, uh, the somewhat different factor which would be needed under this referral agency exemption, it's the service provider delivers service to the client under service provider's name rather than under the name of the referral agency. And it's, I think, um, it's again logical that if you are a legitimate business, then you would provide service under your own name instead of you're following the name of Angie's List. Okay, I, I came from Angie's List that, that you have ordered a certain service and I'm here to perform. You, you just don't say that. And, and it's also, I think, um, if you look referral agencies, especially I think healthcare providers, um, the people who are providing service to elder cares, uh, so those service providers, sometimes the staffing agency has structured in such a way that they are the front names and these people are independent contractor as per their own contract and they were given certain uh, time frames to provide the service so unfortunately it seems that they would not be able to get the exemption uh, especially if you look at this factor so so they have to actually act as an independent business those service providers those social worker or those care worker need to be act as independent business even if they are working as sole proprietors but they have to show that they have their own business license, they have their own uh, location to work, and they are not in some kind of exclusive contract with this uh, referral agency. So, so I think there is one potential issue with people who have structured their businesses in that kind of a way, because I have came across, so, uh, so, so I can see that in this exemption, they would get a harder time to get exemption from ABC test. So the next one is the service provider provides its own tools supply to perform services. It's again the same factor. They need to act as independent and established business and they need to maintain their own clientage and there is no exclusivity with the uh, referral agency. So it's, it's, it's the same that you need to have again those same rates, your own work hours, uh, your own clientage so it's those same um, in I think factors which we have looked in the previous exemption methods but there is one thing you have to look at because to get exemption under this referral agency exemption method that there are certain industries or service providers you need to be in that list to get an exemption so, so who are they? They are, you're working in the field, graphic design, photography, tutoring, event planning, minor home care, moving, house cleaning, errands, furniture, assembly, dog walking, grooming, pool cleaning. So there is a whole lot of lists. So obviously whenever you're looking to, to get an exemption or thinking about how I can um, get out of this EB-5 law, which this uh, EB-5 law provides this strict EBC test, how I can get out of it. 
So first thing you need to look if your age, if your industry is in that particular or if your profession in that particular list or not. Because based on that, you have to follow the exemptions, the method of exemption which were provided. If it doesn't list that, then there is a catch-all business to business relationship exemption method. You can look that based on your situation. Otherwise, you are most probably, you have to show through ABC test that um, that you meet all those factors and uh, and this person is not an employee and which is very hard task because especially if you look the provision B which if usual course of business language it's very broad until I think the courts have any kind of definition attached to it it's so broad that it seems like any person working for you uh, if he or she is not able to get the exemption, that person seems to be an employee. And that's a big thing. So we have looked at all these factors. Um, so the next thing, uh, so again to give you a recap, that ABC law provides you a way of determining if a person is employee or independent contractor. So the general test for under AB5 law it's an ABC test, which is a three-factor test. Any factor which is not met is the determination that this person is an employee. So it's a strict test. And the employer has the burden to prove that, that this person who he or she has hired is not, doesn't meet any of these factors. So if suppose, you want to look that is there any way out from ABC test? Then you have to look exemptions under AB5 law. There are several exemptions. First is the general exemption based on the different profession, either it's physician, surgeon, and there's a whole lot of other list. Second is through professional service contracts. If you belong to again certain professions, then the second thing you have to meet that you have to show that you also meet all the other factors in the professional service contract exemption. And the third one is the business to business contract relationship. This is a catch all situation. If you don't belong to any of the profession, then obviously you have to look and try to see if your facts can fit in that situation. And the next one is the referral agency way of getting an exemption. But there are certain industries that only can get that exemption. So if suppose you are fortunate enough to get an exemption under these different methods, then still there needs to be some kind of a test because it's not done yet. Still the dispute is there that this person is employee or independent contractor, then comes into the situation is the Baroli test, which is an old test, which have this 10, 10 to 12 factors, and not say one single factor is a determinative thing. So if suppose your, your business situation is not meeting one of the factor, it's fine. But I think the whole point in that test and again, I think with this all factors and exemptions that you have to show that you are a legitimate business. You have to show in different way. Uh, do you manage your own clientage? Uh, there is no exclusivity in, in working with this hired person or entity. And you are using your own tools. You don't have uh, much control or direction provided by this hiring entity. You are setting your own rates, you are uh, working uh, at your discretion, using your own skills. Obviously, in any kind of work, you have to follow deadline, but you don't, other person don't decide how you will, what kind of method you will use to reach that particular point, unless and until there is some requirement in some kind of works. But I think overall thing you have to show because it's a factual inquiry. So it's it's not certain that you show two things 
or three things. So it's always good to meet all the factors because it makes your claim more stronger that you are an independent business. So, so in that situation, if you get an exemption from AB5 law, then you have to meet the factors of Baroli test, which is somewhat easier than ABC test. So that's the whole situation and the law about how to decide if you are employee or independent contractor. Why it's important? Because it's the first stage to get whole lot of benefit. If, it can, if a person can show that he or she is an employee of yours and you have classified him as independent contractor, now you have to deal back for last <laughs> three, four years of wages because probably based on this fixed rate you are giving this person, it doesn't even number of hours he or she has worked, it doesn't even meet the requirement of minimum wage. So now you're looking at overtime, meal and rest breaks for last three years or four years in some situation, it's it get very costly, very, very, very costly. You are talking about hundreds and thousands of dollars. So it's really very, very important that if you want to defeat any kind of suit that you need to meet get these factors in and get an exemption from AB5 test and meet factors for Baroli test. And I think once you are at the steps of a lawsuit, the situation is that you cannot change the facts. Facts remains the same. So from now on, you have to understand how you're structuring or classifying your employment relationship because you have to look at that look that get an advice from a legal professional because it's really really very important if you are thinking your employee will notify will notify lawsuit that's good i think if uh, if you have that kind of good relationship with your um with your person who have hired but again it's it's not bad to get an advice at least get a review of your employment relationship with a particular person who have hired you or you have been hired by another person uh, or in future you will hire a person so it's really i think good to have that knowledge the basic stuff so i think you don't do any mistake or if you have any kind of issue going on i think always uh, with employments because there are a lot of penalties so don't mess with <laughs> employment law especially in California so you need to talk with the professionals because the cost is very very high because in a wage and hour claim you cannot claim an employer cannot claim generally their attorney fees even if they win the suit at the end so you can understand you spend this cost forty, fifty thousand dollar or even even ten ten, twenty thousand dollar, but you would not be able to recoup unless and until you would be able to show it's a frivolous lawsuit, which is very rare because you need a whole lot of facts to show that and and courts uh, are unless and until you can clearly show that courts are more favorable to the employee. Uh, because uh, again it's a policy matter so uh, so just think you will not get the attorney fees unfortunately um, so that's a big cost because in any lawsuit even if you keep aside the damages attorney fees is the most important thing you have to look at it's a strategic thing you have to look at your lawsuits through so so you have to decide once you in that situation what you would like to do so, uh, so in the next video, we will talk about the Baroli test and thanks for watching this video. Uh, thanks to Baljeet Rai, Steve Basi, uh, who have been watching this video uh, and just supporting uh, this page uh, because our main purpose is to just provide you that general legal information. Uh, so uh, in any way you can, either you spread around the word that, that there is, uh, this new law and I think there have been great word in the community especially if if I can see in Indian community and 
and also I think other employers, they, they know that there is some kind of big law passed in 2019 and it's enacted um, and it's effective now from January 1st, 2020. So people know about that, but there is, I think, great deal of information which is lacking uh, because there are these several factors. No one knows like what's going on, uh, what's this ABC test all about. So our main purpose is just to provide you that information so you can be an educated client, I think a potential client for any legal professional so that you don't put more time and just come to the point, okay, this is my situation. Uh, am I exempt under the AB5 test or not? Um, so, so that's the whole purpose. So again, thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video. Thank you.